Hello, everybody. Welcome to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Samantha Genzer, and I'll be your show host for today. We have a very great, exciting show for you guys. We're going to be covering the top contenders of the Rookie of the Year Award and the WNBA, UFC Saudi Arabia integrating women competitions, and the Team USA Boxing Olympic team. Recap of recent NWSL matchups swimmers to watch at the Olympics, and make sure you guys stay to the end of the show to hear about the U.S. Women's National Volleyball Team roster for the NOR CECA Pan American Cup Final Six opener. Before we start, I would like to ask that you like and follow the show, and you can become a part of our show by tipping and donating. Your support means a lot to us. Also, we do get a number of questions from viewers that come in during the show. So to ensure that your questions get read on the air, I ask that you use the link gsmcpodcast.net with your questions. This puts your questions at the top of the list so that I see them. And of course, it really helps the show. Again, the link is gsmcpodcast.net. Now, let's get started. I hope you guys enjoy today's content. Okay, so we're starting today's episode by talking about top contenders for winning the WNBA Rookie of the Year Award. I don't have like one solid person that I think is going to take home this award. So I have my top five rookies that I think are going to take home this award. First, let me just give some background information as to what this award is and what it means. The Rookie of the Year Award is the WNBA is an annual accolade given to the league's top first year player. It is awarded based on the player's performance throughout the regular season and it recognizes the rookie who has made the most significant impact on their team and the league. The winner is determined by a panel of sports writers and broadcasters from across the United States. Each panel of sports writers and broadcasters um, I mean, each panel member, I guess, votes for their top three choices and points are awarded, awarded based on the ranking. Five points for first place vote, three for second place vote, and one for third place vote. Some notable past winners of the WNBA Rookie of the Year award include Tamika Cashings in 2002, Diana Tarisi in 2004, Candace Parker in 2008, and Brianna Stewart in 2016. Now... Let's get into the juicy stuff, the top five rookies that I think are in the running for the Rookie of the Year award. This is in no particular order except for my last two. So my fifth, fourth, and third person are in no particular order. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, so let's get started. I think Camila Cardoso is a strong candidate for this award. Cardoso pretty much was unnoticed by the media and the public in the beginning of the WNBA season because her team, while Angel Reese, was getting more attention. Head Chicago Sky coach Don Staley thinks Cardoso is on track to win this award. Cardoso played under Staley's command at the University of South Carolina, and they won the NCAA women's title twice in 2022 and 2024. Cardoso had a bit of a delay in the season because she was undergoing a shoulder injury, but since her return, she has been a mainstay for the sky. According to Staley, Cardoso's impact in Chicago could soon bring her great awards, including being named MVP. Staley said about Cardoso, and I am quoting, She's got that kind of skill set, that kind of one-on-one mentality, six feet, seven inch- inches, agile, got great hands, got great touch around the rim. And you know what? I totally agree with Staley. Cardoso already has that physical advantage and natural athleticism. She immediately adapted to the WNBA, a professional league compared to playing at a university. I do think she needs to start shooting more, and I think that might come with confidence, which she hopefully gains more and more she plays. She also works really well with her teammates. For a specific stat, she averages 9.3 points, 7.2 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 0.2 steals. She is probably more dominant on offense than defense and sort of relies on her height for defense a little more, which isn't a bad thing, but I I just definitely want to see her maybe take more chances, I guess, in shooting in offense and then possibly in steals, you know, but on rebounds, she's absolutely dominating that. So now moving on to our fourth person we got to talk about, and that is Kate Martin. This might be a confusing pick to some people because she also hasn't gotten much media attention until very recently. The media has been caring more about her relationship with her girlfriend rather than how she's been playing recently, but that's, you know, besides the point, that's a different complaint that I have. But coming into the WNBA, Martin was known as Caitlin Clark's former Iowa teammate, but I think she's really made her name known in the Las Vegas Aces. Martin kind of came as an, an underdog since a lot of people didn't think she was good enough to keep up with the Aces, who are back-to-back champions. And I don't think that because... 
I, and I do think that because she's, I'm trying, trying to say this correctly without sounding like, I do think that because she's on the Aces team, she has not gotten much attention considering she's playing with these amazing, amazing, amazing and super well-known champions, but she keeps up with them. She's averaging four points, 2.5 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 0.2 steals. I think she has the potential to be more of a scorer if she just takes more chances. She's averaging 17.2 minutes per game, and I'm really hoping that she can gain more minutes as the season continues. But while her offensive production is helpful, it is her defensive tenacity that makes Martin so good. In practice, she's going up against the likes of Kelsey Plum and now Chelsea Gray, not only getting tested by them, but also pushing them and helping the best get better. It's one of the reasons why, despite being a lower minute role player, she was 12th in the first round of All-Star fan voting returns. Every title team needs a Martin, a player who sacrifices for the greater good, who not only does the grunt work but embraces it, someone who's a cog in the machine and makes sure the engine runs well. In this rookie class, there may be bigger names getting a lot of attention, but Marker may be the only one who will play minutes in games that matter come playoff time, in my opinion. Next person on my list of five is Rakia Jackson. Playing for the Los Angeles Sparks, because Cameron Brink is out for the rest of the season for her injury, Jackson has been getting a lot more well-deserved attention. During her last game, she had seven points on three of nine shooting with one rebound and one steal. Jackson has been a lot more help in the post without Brink. The Tennessee product is 10 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 0.8 assists in 23.9 minutes per game this season. Her efficiency is the real draw. She's hitting 47.1% of her field goals and 52.1% of her two-point attempts. If she continues on this pace, her campaign will represent one of the most efficient ones for a rookie in league history. Now, let's move on to the top two. I don't have, I guess, a certain order for these two, but at the end of the day, I think the Rookie of the Year award is going to come down to these two, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Reese has really came to life in the past few weeks, showcasing a magnet-like ability to absorb missed shots. She's also a stellar defender, putting in impressive plays against all-star caliber talent like Alyssa Thompson, Dewana Bonner, and Sean Quill Jones during the regular season. She's averaging a double-double this year, 12.4 points, 10.8 rebounds, 2.1 assists, and 1.9 steals, a night on 38.6% shooting from the field. After the Chicago VV Indiana Fever game on Sunday, Reese became second in the WNBA in rebounds per game at 11.1, trailing only reigning WNBA Finals MVP Asia Wilson at 11.6. She also had a career-high 25 points that game. Reese is one of the best in the world at rebounding and has incredible hands time for fifth in the league in swipes. She's still, she's far from the finished product, still needing to refine her finishing in the paint. Nevertheless, her shooting numbers have trended upwards during her double-double stress, and she continues to be a menace on the defensive end. Her counting numbers are promising, and her impact of the game is obvious, and I feel like she just keeps improving and improving and improving, and that's what sets her apart from a lot of other players. And then Clark. This is obvious. Clark is far and away the Rookie of the Year frontrunner in 2024. She's strung together an impressive first year in the pros, averaging 16.3 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per contest, while putting up 39, 32.8, 91.2 shooting splits. Clark is one of the best playmakers to grace the sport in recent years, man or woman. She's a marble from beyond the three-point line, even if her numbers don't yet indicate it, I guess. There have been some wobbles in her opening campaign with turnovers and shot selection sometimes letting her down, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more. But however, Clark is clearly on the cups of greatness. She just needs time to get there with the fever. It's I want to blame her team. I'm sorry. And with Indiana quietly making gains on the number eight C team, success could be on her side too. But here's my thing. I will say one thing. Considering Clark's tough beginning in the season with turnovers, I think Reese May at this point, like this second, might have a slightly better chance of getting that Rookie of the Year award. In their first game with the Fever of the season, Clark had 10 turnovers, and the following game she decreased that number, but it was still too many turnovers. It's totally normal for rookies to have, you know, a quote-unquote rough start to their first WNBA season, but Clark had these super high expectations on her back, and a lot of us were shocked to see how many turnovers she had. It seems like she did adapt, did not adapt as well to the professional league as some of the other rookies did, but then again, the reason those turnovers happen is because of her teammates not giving her enough opportunities or helping out. You get the point. It's a team sport. 
But I think those beginning games have hurt her opportunity to get the Rookie of the Year award. However, I would like to emphasize that I still think she has an amazing chance, and I don't think those games have affected her play as much. She has improved so, so, so much throughout the season, and that just shows how amazing she is and how she can increasingly become more and more amazing throughout the season. But I just wanted to point out those few games because I feel like it is relevant. Yeah, I mean... I just, I hope that she does get the Rook of the Year award because, you know, she has made headlines this entire season. Like, it would make sense. She's literally, like, she the, the amount of points she scores in this game is insane. Okay, and I'm going to end this segment by talking about Cameron Brink. I, I just wanted to, like, say a few things. I think that if her injury did not happen, she would definitely be in the top three running for this award. Before her injury, she was averaging 7.5 points, 5.3 rebounds, 1.7 assists, and 1.1 steals. So yeah, I do think that she would have been in the running for the award, but because she's injured, um, I don't think that she has that opportunity anymore, unfortunately, which really stinks because I would like to see her, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark be the three going up for the award. So we are now going to move on to the next segment where we recap. Um, actually, no, we're not doing that yet. We're going to be talking about UFC Saudi Arabia integrating women's competition and Team USA boxing for Olympics. So before we get into that, we're going to be taking a very short break. So I will see you guys very soon. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose your gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? 